chess, like competition law, is as much about defense as attack. Europe's queen of competition policy, Margaret Vestager, has deployed an increasingly adversarial strategy against giant, largely American businesses. Vestager's aim, she says, is to ensure state aid rules and ensure a level playing field, but others see a more overtly political game, a low-grade trade war with tax rulings deployed as the opening gambit. Vestager has played a mighty hand, sacrificing some political capital to gain a much larger prize. This decision sends a clear message. Member states cannot give unfair tax benefits to selected companies. No matter if they are European or foreign, large or small, part of a group or not. I think it's a very good signal that the European Union does not only um, accept and that European leaders don't only accept and support those uh, summaries and those decisions on the G20 level, but that we act within Europe. That's what politics should do. We should make commitments and then we should act. Is Europe fighting a steady trade war with the United States? President Juncker had this to say at the G20 meeting in China. This is not a decision against the United States of America. I'm reading this and that and I'm very unhappy about this. It would be totally absurd to choose this territory of state aid and taxation to uh, attack, so to say, uh, the uh, United States of America. The first decision taken under the uh, tax ruling uh, verification system was a decision against European company. I don't think it's a trade war. I mean, to me, it seems like protectionism. Uh, and I mean, obviously, in this case, it's US companies that are suffering. But I think it's actually general protectionism against all non-European companies and I think actually the bigger problem when we talk about wars it's actually a war on European consumers uh, because it's European consumers who are going to lose out with all these tech products that are that are being challenged at the moment by the Commission. But the game isn't over. Apple's 13 billion euros tax bill is to be appealed by the Irish government and the appeal is supported by more than 60 percent of the Irish people. Quite a reversal of attitude from the LuxLeaks tax scandal. From what I've seen of polls in Ireland though the majority of um, Irish citizens uh, supporting the government in this because I think uh, where the government have got a case is that this could have a chilling effect on investment in Ireland. Uh, of course with its uh, lower corporation tax rate it has been very successful, it has encouraged a lot of uh, companies to come and base themselves in Ireland. The people it seems want big business to pay more tax but not if it cost them their jobs. Vestiger's critics say she's putting European jobs at risk by undermining legal certainty and business confidence, both of which are critical for inward investment. What the US is complaining about that Europe is uh, pretty much launching some war on US corporations. It's something they have always done historically themselves. They have protected the industries, they helped them becoming key global players. So we shouldn't be afraid of that argument. The parts of the US were furious at the EU for slapping Apple with a 13 billion euro fine. EU officials said it was actually Washington which alerted them to Apple's dubious tax scheme in the first place. Ironically, it was a US Senate report in May 2013 which revealed Apple's tax deal with the Irish government. The deal had ruled a big slice of Apple's global earnings untaxable. The European Commission took note and launched its own inquiry one month later. Well, the US, I think, is operating unfairly in terms of global tax. It demands that all profits made by its companies, no matter where, should be taxed at home and it maintains a very high tax rate. So that's encouraging companies to stash their profits offshore and it's encouraging countries in the European Union to sort of compete to attract that US business in a way that's encouraging the race to the bottom on tax and no countries are getting the tax that they need. Here you see a buy with Apple Pay button. So watch what happens when I click buy with Apple Pay, I'm prompted to confirm here on my iPhone. I just use Touch ID with my fingerprint and I can securely authenticate my transaction just like that. I would worry that it is seriously going to damage the potential for investment into Europe because if you are having uh, rulings made by the European Commission, the amount of money they are talking about, 13 billion euros, is a horrendous fine considering this is something that a company and a government 
both thought were legal and have thought were legal for over 35 years. Um, I think it's going to make it very difficult for companies outside of Europe to invest in Europe under that circumstance because currently it almost appears that there isn't really rule of law in this sector. Fortune magazine reported a Democratic senator calling it a cheap money grab for US revenues. Another senator, Carl Levin, said Vestigo was only doing what US authorities had failed to do. Vestigo was closing the loopholes. The US wasn't. I'm not sure that um, it would be in the US's interests to act in the way that, that Vestager did. But what she's very much doing is saying that when US corporations are operating here and actually very dominant in, in markets like information or um, social networks and so on, in, in high-tech markets, then we as Europeans have a right to see the tax that we need to support the broadband infrastructure that we put in place, without which their business wouldn't be possible. The focus of the Commission's investigations has largely been on US tech giants, which has given the strong impression that the process was tainted with a protectionist, anti-American element. But there are a number of reasons why this has nothing to do with protectionism and everything to do with a blind application of the rules. This is a very, very strong case for transparency for country by country reporting in order for you, for me and my services and for the citizens actually to look into what is going on. Do this company have any employees? Do they have any activity? If they have no employees and no activity, then how come they make so much money? And if they make so much money, how come they don't pay any taxes? The companies that we're most concerned about are the digital companies because they're the ones that can most easily move beyond national boundaries and therefore move beyond political power. I think that's why it looks like it's US companies because it's actually the tech companies and it's easy for them to develop monopolies because some of these areas are naturally monopolies. For, the, for example with Facebook it only makes sense to have one global um, social network. And so I think that really raises important questions about who then owns that network and how much profit can be made from that network. On the one hand, there are a lot of valid concerns about uh, these companies not paying taxes, about data protection issues. But at the same time, of course, uh, there are also a lot of European incumbents that are using this um, atmosphere in order to lobby for their own interests. This is not just the case in copyright. So this kind of anti-American feeling or the disgruntled attitude towards American companies is being used by European companies for a broader deregulation agenda. Was ja lediglich ein Entwurf ist, das muss man dazu sagen, deutet darauf hin, dass es eine ganz konkrete Sicht auf die Urheberrechtsreform geht, nämlich aus der Sicht der großen Global Player, wo die alten äh, äh, großen Riesen, die Pressevertreter, die, die, die Verlage äh, gegen die neuen äh, wie Google äh, und andere äh, Anbieter äh, Sturm laufen und sich hier ihre Fründe richten, äh, sichern wollen. The Commission's new copyright reform stands accused of sacrificing the little guys, Europe's small businesses in an attempt to find a clumsy compromise for German publishers upset with Google's search engine dominance. Once again, this digital dogfight has the hallmarks of protectionism, Europe defending its own and repelling the American invader. But is it really that simple? Well, uh, I think it's uh, protecting large publishers against smaller publishers because you have to think about, okay, what happens if uh, articles are no longer available on search engines and in, on social media. People will be more likely to go to the big brands of newspaper websites that they already know in order to find their content. What is not going to happen is that suddenly companies like Google or Twitter will pay publishers in order to be able to show snippets from their articles because at the end of the day the publishers benefit from uh, being on social media much more than the social media benefit. Every publisher in Europe has a, a department or is paying money for uh, search engine optimization, social media strategies. They want to be found on these services. So basically asking these services to pay the publishers to do them a favor is not going to work. Uh, do you think this, will, this idea of uh, going after the big guys is really going to catch on in America? Well, I don't think so because uh, maybe apart from Bernie Sanders, most of the presidential candidates, uh, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, 
they competing for who makes the a best offer in terms of taxes to these multinational corporations. And Apple and these companies have very clearly said, we will only repatriate our money, bring it back home to the United States if you lower the corporate tax rate. And it's part of the problem because the multinational corporations tell us in Europe, you cannot tax us, we are going to tax it in the United States one distant day. And um, in the United States, they say, we don't bring it back if you don't lower the tax rate. So they play us out against each other, but I think that corporate lobby is so strong in the United States, unless Bernie Sanders uh, is uh, shown up in the next elections, I don't see much change here. Jean-Claude Juncker promised his commission would be more political. There's nothing more political than looking after one's own backyard, protecting your own interests. Yet accusations that Europe is now engaged in a quiet trade war with the United States could damage inward investment and steadily undermine the capacity of European companies to access American markets. This will be a moment where European trade has been significantly weakened. And the reason I say that is because it doesn't appear that rule of law has been followed here. And if you do not follow rule of law, then you are in a situation uh, where it is very difficult to invest. And I think that is the fundamental problem. But there is a more immediate, more acute risk for Europe whether Commissioner Vestager is acting for political reasons or simply applying more effectively the rule of law in a politically neutral way, there is a risk to jobs in Europe. As Ireland has shown, there is a great reluctance to punish giant American enterprises because companies like Apple, Intel and Amazon function in a global market with mobile capital. They can and will simply move their business to a more friendly country. Vestager's opening moves have pushed global businesses to a defensive position, but it's far from checkmate. Apple are pushing back, Ireland will push hard, and other member states, often smaller countries with few natural resources or global industries, will fight hard to outmaneuver the queen of competition policy.